Hello and welcome to this video. So we have now the final piece of the dashboard and that is when we click on one of the rows to get the prices, instead of seeing the prices like this, we'd like to see a candlestick chart here actually showing the last 50 candles. Now to do that, we're going to use Plotly, much like we did in Python, except the JavaScript version. So I'm on plotly.com forward slash JavaScript forward slash getting started. And on this page, you'll find somewhere down here, uh, there's a version to download actually, which you can save on your local computer in reference, or we can just take it from the CDN, which we're going to do. So I'm going to copy the script tag here, go into my index.html, and I'm going to paste this, as it says in the Plotly example, into the head like so. Now you might be wondering why we've got the scripts for view and plotly in the head here and we've got the app.js at the bottom of the body. As I explained with Python modules, JavaScript modules are executed as they're imported. So here we're executing all of the script that's inside here, which is just Plotly's library, and then the same thing for Vue.js here. But nothing in the body has been drawn yet. So you remember that in inside our app.js, we actually declare a new view object and attach it to an element with an ID of app. Well, if we imported this script at the top in the head here, then the div with the ID app wouldn't exist yet, which means we'd have an error and it would have a problem setting things up. So generally what's done as normal practice is JavaScript files are included right at the end of the body so that all of the elements that are intended to be used on the web page have already been drawn. So now we have Plotly included, we have to think about how we're going to draw the chart. Now you remember from Python when we drew the candles that we had our information in lists. So we had the list of the close prices, the high, the low, and the open prices. However, when we look at our API at the moment, I'll just go to the raw data, you can see that we've got a list of objects, each one representing a row. What we don't have is a list of the prices. And we need these to be in list format. So we don't want one mid-close, mid-high, mid-low, mid-open, and then another one. We just need the full list of these to be able to plot them in Plotly. Now there are two ways of going around this. One of them is to write some JavaScript, which takes the information that's loaded and converts that into lists. But that's a little bit laborious, and usually you want to avoid having logic as much as possible in the front end and keep it in the back end. So what we can do instead is inside the oanda.api, where we've got this orient equals records, we can change, change this to orient equals list. Now having done that, you'll need to restart your Flask server. And if I just refresh here and get the API again, you can see now that the JSON, I've got a list of the mid C prices, a list of the mid H prices, a list of the low, and a list of the open and list of the time. So if we look at the raw data, you can see I have an object with a key mid C and then a list. So we've got the prices in the format we need to be able to plot them, which is good. So now we can drop back into the index.html and I want to remove this pre statement down here. For now, I'm just going to do edit and toggle block comment. So it's just simply commented out and we can uncomment it if we need it in the future. So to plot the chart, Plotly chart, I'm gonna go quite quickly through this. It's very similar to the Python, but we need a div with a specific ID that we'll use to tell Plotly where to plot the chart. So we'll call this the chart div here. That's all we need to do inside the index.html. All of the work is going to take uh, place inside this app.js here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make a new function called draw chart. Now I'm going to paste this in and I'd recommend you just copy this from GitHub because there's quite a bit of typing in it, but it's basically the same what you've already seen in the Python. So I don't want to spend too much time typing it all out. I'd rather explain what it's doing. So we declare a new function called draw chart. It's not inside our view instance. It doesn't need to be. This is just normal JavaScript. And we take in a parameter data, which is the data that we want to plot. Much like in Python, we make a trace object and then we have the X, the close, the open, the high, the low, where we have our data dot mid C, mid O, etc. We have our increasing and decreasing colors with the line colors and everything exactly the same type as candlestick and defining the X and Y axis. So almost, I think, exactly the same as the Python. We then declare a layout object inside here as well. And this again, similar margins. I've changed the numbers slightly so things fit better. Setting the paper color, not showing the legend. Uh, setting up that we don't have a range slider on the x-axis, all the same stuff as the Python and the font color. One thing we do have here is an auto size equals true so that the graph actually stretches and occupies the full amount of the page. Lastly, to plot it, what we need to do is call Plotly, which we loaded from the Plotly JavaScript file, new plot, say what div we want to plot it in. We give it a list, you have to be careful with this, a list of traces, so we need to put our trace inside the square brackets. Send in our layout, and according to the Plotly documentation, putting in responsive true will make the graph respond to resizing. Now this can be a bit problematic with Plotly, and in fact, we've got this down here to immediately resize the chart once the chart has been drawn. And I'm going to explain in a minute as to why that's happening, because we're going to have a small issue that I want to show you first. 
So saving that then, we've got our function to actually draw our Plotly chart. What we need to do now is go down into our view instance and actually call the function to draw the chart. So inside our load prices then, we can say we'll draw the chart and send in our price data. So if I go back into the website and I've got the console open at the bottom here, I'm just going to click on pound US dollar and see what we get. And what you can see is we get an uncaught error that no element with the ID chart div exists on the page to be able to draw. So why has that happened? Well, if we go to app.js and just have a quick look at the way things are working, when we come to load our prices, so we select a row, we clear the interval, we load our price data and we set show prices is equal to true. When that happens, this v if statement here is correct and we draw this div. The problem is, is when we set so show price is equal to true, we immediately call draw chart and this is being called faster than the time it's taken to actually create this div with the id chart div. So Plotly gets to the bottom of the drawing function, tries to find the chart div and it doesn't exist yet. And why doesn't it exist? Well, the reason is when you use v if, it'll only draw the element once the condition becomes true. Otherwise the element's never been drawn on the page. There's an alternative to this and that's called v show. And we're going to change this now to v show. And what v show does is draw the element, but then sticks a CSS hide on it so it's not visible and takes that off when this condition here is true. And just up here as well, I'm going to change this v if to v show. So you might ask yourself then, well, what's the point of using v if if we end up with problems like this? Well, it really is a performance decision. Remember, if you've got v show, then you will create all of the elements. So if you've got, let's say, 500,000 elements on your page that will all be selectively shown depending on certain conditions, vshow would draw all 500,000 and then set their CSS to hide. Now that would be a pretty big performance hit. Better there would be to use a vif. But if you've got relatively few elements, then it doesn't really matter. You can use the vshow. It depends on your use case. And what we should see now when we go back to the web page is that if we click the pound US dollar, for example, we get our candle chart and we don't get any errors inside the console. The chart as well should be responsive, so it responds to changing in sizes, it does. And now back in the code, I can go back up to this app.js and just explain a little bit about this resize here. If I just comment this resize out, go back into the dash, go back here again, you'll see that the graph is not occupying the full width. If I change the width a little bit, you can see that the chart does change the width. It's being responsive as we specified. However, it wasn't responsive at the start when we initially drew the chart. And in my experience, there are quite a few problems with the Plotly library. And also, if you look on the Plotly support on Git and stuff like that, there are quite a few comments from people that this responsiveness doesn't really work quite correctly. So what we do at the end of the drawing here is we simply say, OK, once you've plotted the chart on the chart div, just resize, which means have a look what size the chart div is and then should be responsive and fill that. So that's what corrects that problem. The last thing I'd like to do, though, if I just refresh this and click again, is I'd like us to take up more of the height. So we can go into our styles.css and then down the bottom here, we'll just take our chart div and we're going to say, please occupy 80% of the vertical height available on the page. So I'll save that, go back into the web app, click, and you can see that the chart occupies the full height. Now, if it doesn't occupy the full height for you, then try restarting your Flask server and going again, because all sorts of strange stuff happens with caching and things like that. So there we are then. We've got a web app which automatically updates at the moment using the one minute candles, which is a bit quick and it updates every 15 seconds. We can see various signals. So we have a spinning top here, for example. And then we can click on any of these currencies we want and we can see the last 55 minute candles prices for the particular currency in question. So we've completed a huge amount now in this series. There's one thing left to do and that's to start looking at how to make an actual live trading bot. So thanks very much for watching and see you in the next video.